The year is 1988. It's Friday night and you're on your way to Blockbuster to pick up a couple of movies for the weekend. Browsing your way through those neatly categorized shelves of shiny plastic VHS boxes, it doesn't take you long before you see it. There it is, staring you in the face, the gladiator that is Arnold Schwarzenegger holding his sword aloft as though he were challenging the gods themselves. With a title like Conan the Barbarian, written in epic impact across the bottom, you are sold. You slot the tape into your VCR and before you know it, you're transported into a world of savagery, warlords and most importantly, Arnold Schwarzenegger with a massive sword. Watching his chiseled abs and mighty arms, you wanted nothing more than to join him in Hiberia to fight for glory, but alas, the dreams of sword swinging with a massive Austrian man had to remain firmly locked away in your imagination. That was until. 35 years later in 2017, game developer Funcom turned your fantasy of being a barbarian survivalist into a reality with the release of Conan Exile, a survival game set against the vast and brutal universe of Robert E. Howard's Conan the Barbarian. Hello everyone, my name is Dumbways Takai and welcome back to another installment of the worst survival game ever series, a series where I'm going to do my absolute best to play every survival game ever in the hopes of finding the worst one. However, unlike my previous videos, I I actually enjoyed this one. I have never played Conan before, nor had I personally heard much about it either, but after I was recommended to play it by the wonderful Josh Drive Hayes, I just had to give it a go. I mean, you can't exactly say no to a man in a waistcoat, right? With the early access release, Conan Exiles was a resounding success initially, impressively selling over 320,000 copies in the first week, and reportedly saving Funcom from bankruptcy, and despite being a buggy mess at launch, it still holds a daily player rate of over 126,000 people, and even racking up a staggering total of just shy of 13.3 million players. Having no prior knowledge to the game's mechanics or playstyle, I decided to bring in some company for backup, in the form of my good friend and terrible game player, Wicked Wiz. Say hi, Wiz. Wiz? What, what are you watching? D don't worry, I'll give you a minute, mate. A few moments later. Nice of you to join us, Wiz. Don't worry, we don't have to discuss the uh, incident. Once we finally got into a party and into the same server, we were loaded into the character creation menu, which starts you off in the last place you want to be in any survival situation, strapped firmly to a crucifix. The character creation is really diverse and user-friendly, and I absolutely love a good morphing slider. With our characters finalized, the game's initial cutscene begins immediately with you still pinned unceremoniously to your crucifix. You can see vultures circling above you, waiting impatiently for your final breaths to leave your body, only to be saved by none other than the man himself, Conan. I loaded into the scene with a loud yelp from Wiz and found myself inside him. For God's sakes, get your minds out of the gutter, people. We spent the first few minutes familiarizing ourselves with the controls and really enjoying the sand physics. Unlike some child murdering space wizard, I actually enjoy a good bit of sand. Speaking of immersive game physics though, this does unfortunately fall flat in certain areas. From the get-go, you're given survivor quests in the top right-hand corner to guide you through getting to grips with the basics of the game. This includes things like searching chests, keeping yourself fed and watered, and gathering crafting supplies to make some rudimentary clothes. Gaining XP is also incredibly easy in the lower levels. I found myself leveling up just from running through the dunes. Like most great RPGs, the leveling system is built on allocating points into different stats depending on how you, the player, want to play the game. Wanting to start my journey becoming a crafty warrior, I put my first few points into strength, vitality and expertise. To say the map is big is a dramatic understatement. According to the Conan wiki, the size of the map is just about hitting the actual limit of 400k by 400k. After that, Unreal's physics starts misbehaving. For example, the easternmost islands, corpses have a bit of a bad habit of falling through the ground sometimes. After a fair bit of time exploring the environment and physically assaulting the local fauna, we came across our first in-game enemy, a man named Ho Odor the Humble seen sitting around a fire with the apparent temperament of a particularly disgruntled hornet. Seriously, just going near him was enough to fill him with not so humble deadly rage. I avoided the initial attack thanks to having a leisurely swim, and fortunately none of the NPCs have bothered learning to do that. God help them when the ocean levels continue to rise. Initially, the combat comes across as quite uncoordinated and a bit wonky, but to be fair, I am trying to impale the man to death with a pickaxe, so I'm not going to judge it too harshly just yet. It wasn't long before we came across another group of NPCs, and with the confidence of my last kill filling every muscle, I charged head first, only to be swiftly cleaved absolutely in twain with an arrow to the waist. Combat is definitely going to take some practice and maybe some actual, you know, weapons at least. Without making a bedroll which acts as a spawn point, we respawn back at the original start point of the game. Frustrating as fuck, but all is not lost as your death point is displayed on the map. Upon finding your bodies and collecting your items, I was delighted to see that 
all of them return to their place of origin. It's a small but really handy and highly appreciated feature. We'd been venturing for long enough, and after the brush with our own fragile mortality, we knew we needed to build a safe space to lay down our heads. I have to say, the building mechanic UI is awesome, and as an avid Rust player, this scores high in my books. While we're on the topic of Rust, we decided to go with a classic one by one with an airlock. There was one thing I found whilst browsing the menus that did not spark a great deal of joy, and according to many accounts on Reddit, did not spark a great deal of joy in many other players, and that, of course, was the introduction of a goddamn motherfucking battle pass. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know a single survival game with a purchasable battle pass. Given that there's already an in-game store to buy cosmetics using Chrome coin, which you could probably imagine the exchange rate from real money is dreadful, why there needs to be a battle pass is completely beyond on me. As time went on, we renovated and upgraded our house by adding a second floor and thought we were finally worthy to call ourselves a clan, aptly naming ourselves Only Clans. We made a good home for ourselves here, a solid foundation for any freshly developing warriors. But as the sun had set on our little homestead, so had Wicked Wiz's time on this server. He unfortunately had to leave me to venture forth on my own. For now, the burden of becoming a true barbarian was mine and only mine to bear. Also, he had to go and finish watching whatever it was he was before. Godspeed, Wiz. Take care and remember to delete your browser history. I decided to start a fresh journey with a new face. Like a Time Lord who recently regenerated, but also not like that at all. Fast forwarding through everything you've seen before, I thought I'd take a true look at the tutorial system, which is broken up into sections called journeys. Specific tutorials that allow you to follow whichever path you wish. Everything from fighting to crafting has a singular journey for pretty much everything, which I found great for a new player experience. All too often are you dumped into a survival game with a long and tediously slow tutorial teaching you everything at once, or even even better, one where there's no tutorial at all, and you're expected to learn through trial and error and the ethos of get good scrub. So it's really refreshing playing a game which lets you take everything at your own pace. I started out with a warrior journey so I could get a feel for the actual combat system, which still felt incredibly wonky. At times it felt like time slowed down mid-fight, and I'm not sure whether this was an intentional feature of the game at all. Slowly making my way through the journeys, I found myself really enjoying the game, soaking up the environment, the diverse scenery and the wildlife that filled it. There was so much around me that I'd only covered an incredibly tiny portion of the map. There is a heavy focus on exploration, which I did manage to find out whilst doing the blacksmith journey. While sometimes immersion can be great, it would have been even more great had they included a marker to a resource for the first time you needed it for a task, just so you know what the hell you're meant to be looking for. Honest to god, I spent over an hour looking for coal purely because I didn't know where it was. Given the map's insanely large size, an initial resource indicator would be really helpful for first time players. Even just pointing to the general area of said resource would be a bit more of a helpful push. And it was at this point I didn't play the game or record any content for over a month. Not because I got bored with the game, because I was really enjoying making this video. I, uh, I stopped recording purely because Baldur's Gate 3 came out, and I got real bad Baldur's Gate brain rot. Seriously, it's legitimately all I did for a month. But I eventually put on my big boy pants and told myself I wasn't going to play anymore until I got this video done. So after a long month, I loaded back into the world of Conan. Only to find myself devoid of any clothes, weapons, or items in a place I did not recognise. In fact, after looking through the footage, I'm absolutely certain I have never been here before and this isn't where I left off a month ago. I checked out the map and couldn't find my house or any of my bedrolls, so I decided to take a long walk and try and find them. And that plan went really wrong because I shortly managed to succumb to frostbite because I was not kitted out for this weather at all. But respawning at one of the OG spawn points, I took off to go and find my house, only to be met with buildings I'd never I'd ever seen before, and monoliths of players are new. I knew I'd left this world a month ago, and in turn, it had left me. Whilst doing my research, I did find a Reddit post saying that Funcom servers had a habit of deleting players' houses and even player accounts for absolutely no reason, so I think I may have fallen victim to this little issue. From a design point of view, Conan Exiles is a marvel. The landscapes, spanning from scorching deserts to snow-capped peaks, showcase a diverse terrain that not only serves as a backdrop, but plays a crucial role in the survival mechanics. Every biome challenges you differently, with its unique weather conditions, wildlife and resources. Character design and animation animations are painstakingly detailed, reflecting the game's brutal nature. Enemies too vary in design, strategy and challenge levels. The architecture, influenced by real-world ancient civilizations, is recreated with authenticity, adding depth and immersion. In short, 
Conan is a fun, well thought out and immersive survival game. Yes, it has its bugs and jankiness, which I can see that if you're a long time player can become irritating. But having said this, it's an extremely visually pleasing game that easily has to be one of my favourite new player experiences. It doesn't hold your hand, but guides you through like a wise mentor, teaching you how to survive in this unforgiving world. There is so much more to this game than what I've been able to show you here, and not to mention the 12 expansive DLCs that followed from this release. I genuinely barely scratched the surface in this video. Maybe one day I'll come back to this and complete my journey, but now it's on to my next adventure, to play every survival games in hopes of finding the worst one, and I definitely did not find it here. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you want to follow me on my journey, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow my socials, and I'll see you in the next worst survival game ever.